Hello. Welcome to the Detroit Experience. I'm an android and I'll be your hostess. And I'm gonna be the one going for the Detroit Become Human Platinum. Sorry about that, that was a bit of a cringe intro. But anyways, what you guys are all here for is of course the trophies in this game. So after having just recently completed the Horizon series with both Zero Dawn and Forbidden West done, go check out those videos, I decided I wanted to do a somewhat shorter and easier game that didn't take like 60 hours to complete, so I thought why not try out Detroit Become Human. So for those of you that don't know what this game is about or what the gameplay is like, it's pretty much what I could summarize it as is a telltale game, but a lot more in depth than a telltale game. Because you see, in Telltale games, they tell you that you have a choice, but in reality, it's pretty much just the exact same storyline, just a few slight differences. Whereas in this game, picking up an item from a table can literally change the ending. There's something like 40 different endings in this game, which is quite insane. Thankfully though, in order to get the Platinum, you do not need to get all 40 different endings. Speaking of trophies though, there are 49 trophies in the base game and luckily there is no DLC to worry about. So in the guide by PSM Profiles, they actually give it a 3 out of 10 difficulty, takes 3 playthroughs and about 20 hours to complete, which I agree with. And so in order to get the trophies, I broke it down into 4 simple steps. So step 1 was to enjoy my own playthrough and get whatever trophies that come my way. Step 2 was to do a pacifist playthrough. Step 3 was to do a violent playthrough, and then step 4 was to clean up any remaining trophies. Alright, so just before I start getting into it fully, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you like the content and want to see more, and let's get into step 1. Also, just quickly, spoiler warning, I'm pretty much going to spoil most of the story, well in terms of my playthroughs anyway, as all the trophies are related to the story, so it's pretty hard not to spoil it. Alright, so step one was pretty much a blind playthrough for me. I just did whatever I wanted to do, and I wasn't specifically going for trophies, but if they came my way, they came my way. I just wanted to enjoy the story and make my own decisions instead of having to follow a guide. But that being said, I did end up getting quite a few trophies for the way I played. So to start the story off, we get introduced to one of the three main playable characters. My name is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. And in my opinion, Connor is probably the best character out of the three. Anyway, the reason why Connor is here is he has been sent in as a android negotiator as another android has gone rogue and taken a little girl hostage, so Connor must save the day. And this is where the first couple of trophies come into play. So in my initial playthrough, I managed to slowly approach and talk down Daniel here, the android. And eventually he agrees to let Emma, the little girl, go and Connor saves the day. Unfortunately, he lied to Daniel and Daniel dies. Man, you lied to me, Connor. You lied to me. Mission successful. And so with that, I did get my first two trophies. Trophies along the way too. Oh wait, there's one there. Mission accomplished. Connor saved Emma. There we go. And thank you. Play the first chapter. Alright, well I'm locked in now. I've already gotten two trophies already, so there you go. After that, we then briefly get introduced to our two other characters that we play as, Kara and Marcus. We then move on into the next chapter where we play as Kara for the first time, and this is where we actually get our third trophy. So for this one, you just have to befriend Alice here, the little girl uh, at the house that you're staying at, um, and she will trust you and give her her key to unlock her box. So after opening the box, we find some drawings from Alice, which reveal that Todd, her father, the owner of the house and the owner of Kara, actually uh, destroyed her last time and had to get her fixed. And from meeting Todd before, you can tell this guy is going to be a bit mentally unstable. You, need, you hate me. You hate me, don't you? Say it! You hate me! Yeah, whatever you do guys, don't be like Todd. Just don't. Anyway, that chapter ends there and we get our third trophy. <clears throat> oh, 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 secrets. Kara discovered the content of Alice's box. 
Moving on to the next chapter, we are back playing as Connor now. And this is where we meet Hank for the first time. And so Hank here is a, or Lieutenant Anderson, is a police detective and Connor has been tasked to help him in some of the investigations surrounding deviants, which are the androids that go rogue. And so they show up to this house here where they find a grisly murder scene. And it is our job as Connor to investigate the surroundings and conclude as to what happened. So we get our detective still skills going and we find out that the Deviant is actually still in the house and did not run away. So we climb up into the attic and we find the Deviant caught red handed. Oh crap. Deviant located. Connor found the Deviant in the attic. Let's go, another trophy. We then go back to playing as Kara where Todd is up to his old tricks again. So after literally hitting Alice, uh, she runs away upstairs and Todd tells Kara not to move to go after her and this is quite a big moment in the game as this is the first time we become a deviant as one of the playable characters. And so with that, Kara becoming a deviant, she gains her own free will and so she decides to go and protect Alice. And so we have a bit of a scuffle with Todd eventually uh, besting him and we run away with Alice outside onto the bus and make our escape. We are free. Kara and Alice escaped Todd's house. Let's go, that is another trophy. We're on a roll here. Moving on, I did forget to uh, record one of Marcus's earlier chapters. Uh, you pretty much just find out that you're this guy's android, Carl Manfred, and you pretty much just uh, walk around his house do some paintings with him and get introduced to his uh, weird son. Why, why and so this chapter that we're on to now, you return home again at night, find that the place could have been broken into, ends up just being Carl's son, and he's uh, not really in a stable mindset either, kind of like Todd. And so we end up getting into a bit of a scuffle with Leo, uh, and this is where Marcus also becomes a deviant. So the second character now we've become a deviant as, um, except we do listen to Carl's advice and we endure getting hit by Leo, which results in Carl suffering a heart attack. And so some cops show up from earlier, the ones that we called thinking that it was a break in. Well, now they show up at the worst timing and Leo blames Carl's death what? on the no, android, of course, Marcus. And so they no shoot way. Marcus. What? Self-control. Marcus let Leo win. Far out. Bro, these are so intense. But before we can find out more about, about Marcus, we are back playing as Connor as we are interrogating the android that we found in the attic. So similar to the first chapter playing as Connor where we saved the little girl, you pretty much just got to gain the deviant's trust here. Uh, make them like you, and then I will get a trophy for doing this soon. But yeah, we pretty much make him confess about committing the murder, even though it's pretty obvious it was him. But with Connor now being able to confirm that deviants really are a thing based on this, what this android has said, he goes to leave the room. Um, but the cops come in, try to take away the android. Luckily, Connor calms the situation down and nothing happens. Confession! Let's go! Oh, another trophy. Connor made the android confess. I was then back playing as Kara with Alice and we have to find a place to stay for the night. Whilst looking for a place to stay, this android uh, helps us out by telling us where we can go to get some help, uh, which will come into play later on. But for now, we do end up finding a abandoned house where we are able to squat for the night. Unfortunately, there's also a psycho android called Ralph living here as well, who likes to kill all humans that come near, um, but I still decide to stay here anyway. Luckily, Ralph leaves us alone and goes and carves RA9 into the walls, because apparently that's what all the deviants do, they worship the god RA9. But with Ralph leaving us alone, it does allow us to put Alice to bed and stay the night in the abandoned house. Shelter. Kara and Alice slept in the motel or the squat. Cool, that's another trophy down. 
We then cut back to Marcus, who is somehow still alive after being dumped in with the rest of the android rubbish. Um, he manages to build himself back up, and we manage to escape from this area. My name is Marcus. Oh. Oh, he's got the jacket and everything. However, we do not get any trophies in that chapter, so we move on now back to playing as Connor, where we have to wait for Hank to arrive at the police station. So in the meantime, we do some digging and figure out some more stuff about him. Oh, he likes his donuts, of course. The police guy like their donuts. And so once I've analyzed everything on Hank's desk, he finally does arrive. And while he goes and gets grilled by his boss, uh, we go and investigate the surrounding office and find the android from before and me just speaking to him he decides to die oh, Hurry. anyway we meet back up with hank um, and we investigate some of the deviant cases until we get a lead on kara of all androids know your partner connor found all the clues about hank Moving on to the next chapter, we are back playing as Kara at the house and we have to change her clothes and take out her LED on her forehead in order to blend in more like a human. Kara then notices that Connor and Hank are investigating across the street so they must get out of there immediately. Connor comes over and investigates the house. Luckily, Ralph saves the day and buys us some time to run away. Playing as Connor, we try to chase down Kara and Alice along the streets until eventually they get to an alley where Kara and Alice climbs over a fence which leads to a highway which we're able to cross getting some quick time events correct so they don't die and then as Connor I made the decision not to chase after them and this leads to the end of the chapter for another trophy run Kara run Kara and Alice escape the police we are then back playing as Marcus as we follow some clues to find the android hideout called Jericho. He manages to get inside the old rusted cargo ship where it is revealed that there are in fact other androids hiding out here and that leads to the end of this chapter. We are then back playing as Connor with Hank about to investigate another crime scene. Is there anything you'd like to know about me? Hell um, no. Well, yeah. Um, why do they make you look so goofy and give you that weird voice? EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! Anyway, they do eventually get to the crime scene where, of course, as Connor, we do some investigating and once again, the android is hiding in the attic. Bit of a common theme, I reckon. But, we're not gonna let the android get away that easy, so as Connor, we do chase after him. Unfortunately, though, after a long chase scene, I end up stuffing up and forgetting which way to go, and so the Deviant does get away, because I'm a bit of a bot. Alright, back now at Marcus at Jericho, we do talk to some of the androids here. Marcus realized that they're living in fear as they're just hiding out here and he wants to make a change. So he decides to plan a heist to go steal some blue blood and bio components, which is what keeps the androids running from a warehouse nearby. Now back playing as Kara, we arrive at the house, which is the house that the android in the previous chapter told us we could find help, and we find this man called Zlatko, who is willing to help us. Unfortunately though, he turns out to be a bit of a psycho like Todd, and he in fact kidnaps androids to experiment on them. Luckily as Kara, we are able to escape from the trap that he's set up so we don't get rebooted and lose all our memory. Along the way we also managed to free some of the other androids that are looking pretty weird due to the experiments. But we're in a bit of a rush here so we need to save Alice. We do end up finding her in one of the bedrooms upstairs. We then tried to sneakily make our way outside of the house, but unfortunately Zlatko's android Luther finds us and we make a daring escape while getting shot at by Zlatko with his shotgun. Eventually we make it outside out the back door where we are confronted by Zlatko and Luther. Luckily Luther has a change of heart, becoming a deviant himself and he stands up and protects us from Zlatko who then gets killed by the very de androids that he experimented on previously. A fitting end, I reckon. 
Luther then offers to be our protective guardian and join us on the rest of our journey, and this leads us to the end of the chapter. Is that a trophy? Let's go escape the manor. Kara and Alice escape Zlatko's house. We then arrive back as playing as Connor, where we find Hank drunk inside his own house and unconscious. Uh, we do end up sobering him up as we prepare to go to the next crime scene. But while we're here, we learn a few few things more about Hank, including this picture, which will come into play later on. Now it is time for us to conduct our first heist as Marcus as we look to take back some spare parts for the androids. We do eventually end up finding our way to the crates here with blue blood and the bio components. However, we are almost caught by a security android, but we manage to hide him and keep him silent and then also convert some other androids nearby. We then take them on board and bring them back to Jericho, which means he gives us the idea of stealing this truck which has even more bio components and spare parts to save even more androids at Jericho. And so to get the key to unlock the truck, we go over to a nearby security guard outpost, distract them for a bit, steal the key, get back to the truck and make our escape, which leads to the end of the chapter and another trophy. Do we get a trophy here? Let's go, Jericho's hero. Marcus got enough parts. Okay, so we obviously got that for yeah, stealing the truck full of parts, so that was worth doing then, cool. We then cut back to Connor as we are here investigating a disturbance at the Eden Club. Now, I don't want to get demonetized here on YouTube, but uh, this Eden Club, uh, let's just say it's an Android club uh, where you have a good fun time. Anyway, uh, one of the victims here was strangled by an Android and we have to find out where she went. So using Connor's ability to probe Android's memories, we look through the uh, camera recordings through their eyes to locate which way the Deviant went. And we do have only three minutes to do this, so we've got to be quick. And so reconstructing her path, we find that she went into a back staff room. We managed to find her hiding out the back here until another Android jumps us. Turns out there's two of them. And so we have a bit of a scuffle with them two until eventually we get the upper hand and have the option to shoot the droid here uh, but we decide not to which Hank approves of and perhaps Connor is becoming more of a deviant doubts the Tracy's Tracy sorry the Tracy's escaped so yeah we did let her leave we did leave them to be we didn't kill them this time, back playing as Kara, we're with Luther and Alice in a car, as Luther is taking us somewhere where he actually does know someone who can help us for real this time, not like Zlatko, who was a bit of a psycho. Anyway, the car breaks down on the side of the road. We have to find some shelter, so we find a nearby uh, abandoned theme park, uh, where we make shelter, then some androids ambush us. Turns out they're nice though. Nice guy called Jerry, there's heaps of them, and they end up taking Alice on a ride on the merry-go-round. But that leads to the end of the chapter and another trophy. A smile on her face. Alice enjoyed a ride on the merry-go-round. We then have a short little chapter here playing as Connor where we discuss some things with Hank. He threatens to kill us uh, for some reason but we manage to talk him down and that is the end of that short little chapter. It will come into play later on though for other playthroughs. We are then back playing as Marcus where we plan our next heist which is to infiltrate a news uh, media tower where we aim to broadcast a message to the whole of Detroit that androids are alive and they want to be free. So we make our way to the top where we knock out the guards and then we trick ourselves into the media room where one guy tries to run away and I decide not to shoot him which he sets off the alarm so that the police come running. So we don't have much time, so we get recording and broadcasting our message to the population with Marcus uh, taking off his skin, so it shows what androids really do look like. Luckily, we get our speech just in time as the riot police uh, rock up and Simon ends up getting shot. Uh, we do save, save him and make our way up to the rooftop. Unfortunately, Simon can't make the jump, so we have the choice between either killing him or leaving him alive. I decide to leave him alive, and so the three of us, Josh, North, and Marcus, we run away and jump off the building. 
Let's go. What a chap that was. That was sick. Now back as Connor, we go and investigate Stratford Tower, just where Marcus was, to figure out what exactly happened. So for some reason I didn't go up to the rooftop as I thought I would be able to do that later on but unfortunately I interrogated the androids here to figure out if any of them were in on it and one of them attacks Connor almost killing him but Connor manages to save himself chase after the android where we are given the choice of what to do and I decide to save Hank which in turn actually sacrifices Connor anyway getting him killed and pretty much everyone else except for Hank. Now, finally back as Kara, we make our way to the house here where we're going to find some help, where we meet Rose and her son Adam, and they are willing to help us get across the border to get to Canada, which is a safe haven for androids. Unfortunately, as soon as Rose leaves to go get help for the border, uh, a police officer arrives at the house looking for androids. Uh, we have to tell Luther and Alice to go upstairs to get to safety, and we also have to hide evidence evidence so we don't look too suspicious around the cop. Luckily if you hide all the evidence and answer all the police officers questions he won't be too suspicious and he'll just leave the house without anything happening. And this gets us a trophy. Ooh, uh, nothing to see here. Kara succeeded to make the cop go away. Yes let's go. Now back playing is Marcus we stage another heist or another riot where we go and break out some more androids from some from some cyber life stores in order to convert more over to our side. Once we've broken in and converted them all, we then have the choice to either conduct a pacifist riot or a violent riot. On my first playthrough, I decided to just do a pacifist riot. So this pretty much is just not breaking anything and just pretty much doing a bunch of graffiti and stuff like that instead. And so this does end up netting us another trophy. Let's go, another trophy, send a message. What's this for? Mark has conducted a pacifist riot. Now, yes, we are back playing as Connor, because he does come back from the dead, as Cyberlife just creates a new Connor and transfers all his memory over to him. Um, so Hank's a bit unhappy to see us, because he's just seen his friend come back from the dead. Anyway, we are here at Elijah Kamsky's house. Elijah is the creator of the androids in this world so the guy that started it all we're here to interrogate him about the deviants he's quite interesting of a character this elijah you can tell he's very very smart but in order to give us any information about the deviants he does a little test on connor where he says he'll give us information if we shoot this chloe android here or if we don't show, shoot her and show empathy as Connor, he won't tell us anything. I decide to not shoot here as Connor, uh, which increases his software instability, and as Elijah says... Cyberlife's last chance to save humanity is itself a deviant. After that, though, we quickly uh, rush out of there with just before us leaving, Elijah gives us this cryptic By the way. clue as well. I always leave an emergency exit in my programs. You never know. And so this is the end of the chapter with another trophy. Kinship. Connor refused to kill the Chloe. Yes sir, that is another trophy. We are then back playing as Marcus once again where we conduct a march. Along the way we convert as many androids as possible. However, the police do eventually rock up, threatening to shoot us if we do not disperse. And so to try to save as many android lives as possible, I decide that we are going to disperse. But the police lie and end up shooting majority of them in the back anyway. However, this does give us a good public image as it shows that the police are killing innocents. Now back to playing as Connor, this is our last chance to solve the deviant case as the FBI are taking over, so Hank and Connor have been uh, told to leave, but Connor wants to figure it out, so Hank causes a distraction, allowing us to go down into the evidence room with one more shot at figuring it out. So using the clues on display, we end up tricking one of the androids into telling us where Jericho is by mimicking Marcus's voice, and that is how we figure out where Jericho is. Bloodhound. Connor got the location of Jericho by himself. Let's go. 
here we get to one of the, well, the biggest chapter in the game called Crossroads, where we play as all three different characters all at once in the same chapter. So we're here as Kara, trying to find Jericho in order to get Marcus to help us. We also are here as Connor in order to find the leader, obviously Marcus, and then we're also here as Marcus, figuring out what our next steps should be. Also, I forgot to mention earlier, but yes, Simon is back with the group. Because we didn't find him at the Stratford Tower as Connor, he did manage to escape and make his way back to Jericho. Once everyone leaves the room, however, Connor does come in to confront Marcus, saying that he has to take him in alive, but he may have to shoot. So as Marcus, we try to reason with him and turn him to Marcus's side, the android side. And so eventually we get the choice as Connor to stay a machine or become a deviant. And you know damn well that I'm choosing to become a deviant. So now all three of the main playable characters are deviants. And so with Connor now also a deviant, he lets Marcus know that the FBI are on their way to Jericho as we speak and they must prepare to escape. So as Kara, we start to run away. Uh, unfortunately, Luther does get shot, but we decide to save him. But before that, we're back playing as Marcus and Connor, as we're also running away. He sends out a message to everyone to tell them to get off the ship, as he's going to blow it up to get it to sink, so that the FBI evacuate and all the machines can get away. So after saving Luther, he tells us to go on without him, so we leave him behind so he can catch up later. We run off with Alice. Sorry for the chop and change, but we're back playing as Connor once again, where we save some androids from the guards. We also get the option to save Josh as well later on. Now back to Kara real quick. We make our way outside where some guards find us, shoot all the androids around us. We decide to play dead, which allows us to escape the scene. All right, now back playing as Marcus. We make our way down to the room where we set off the explosives and then we have to make our escape before the ship blows up. On our way out, North ends up getting shot, but we do decide to save her. And so with that, everyone jumps out of the side of the ship and makes it out alive, which leads us to the end of the chapter and three different trophies. Trophies, trophies, trophies? Three at Jericho, bring the three characters to Crossroads. Let's go. That's, yeah, Kara, Connor, and Marcus, look look at all these different paths. Oh, one of us. Connor became a deviant. Damn, two trophies in one, let's go. And another one, Scorched Earth. Marcus or Connor detonated the freighter. Damn. Three trophies in one, look at this. That is amazing stuff right there. Let's go. So after that, we then cut to Marcus going to Carl's grave in order to look for some advice and just see his grave, I guess. And then we cut back to the church where all the androids are hiding out at after Jericho obviously was compromised. And here, of course, we decide to trust Connor because, of course, it's Connor. Of course, I'm not going to get him killed or not let him join. He did become a deviant after all. And this sets up the next chapter for Connor to go reawaken all the androids at one of these Cyberlife plants. And so as Marcus, as the leader of the androids, we decided to do a peaceful demonstration, a march towards the camps where they are killing off all the other androids in the city, which of course sets up the ending to the game as well. And so playing as Connor, we infiltrate the Cyberlife Tower. And so we, once we've snuck inside, we manage to kill off the guards uh, so we can go do our own thing. But before that happens, we cut back to Kara, who is on her way to the bus terminal, which will take her and Alice across the border to Canada. Along the way, we end up finding Luther and Jerry and save their lives. And so we end up heading off with Luther towards the bus terminal, where we manage to convince our way past some guards to get there. But before that, we cut back to Marcus, who is currently doing his peaceful march towards the camps in order to uh, liberate them. And as we get closer, the guards end up shooting off quite a few of the androids, which again makes our public opinion go up as they are shooting innocents, as we are being very peaceful. 
But before we continue with that, we're back playing as Connor as we make our way down to sub-level 49, which is where we hope to convert all of these androids here to become deviants and join Marcus's cause. However, just as we're about to convert them all, another Connor appears holding Hank captive. Alright, sorry. Now back is Kara, we arrive at the bus terminal. However, you need tickets in order to get on the bus, and we do not have any. Uh, we do end up running across a family who drop their tickets, but I felt too mean not giving them back to them, so I, I decided to give the tickets back to them. We move on, and we end up seeing Todd again, who we convinced to actually uh, save us, and he kind of redeems himself and lets us go instead of alerting us to the security guards and then we do end up finding Adam and Rose who drive us away uh, to find another way across the border. Now back playing as Marcus, we have set up shop right out front of the camp, set up a little barricade in order to protect us from the gunfire and they have stopped firing as all the reporters are there uh, keeping us safe due to the public opinion. The leader of the FBI then calls out Marcus alone to come have a chat to him about what's going to happen and he gives us a deal that we can uh, stop this, give everyone up and he'll let us go free without anyone being killed or if we refuse the deal they'll attack and kill all the androids. Of course I wasn't going to accept that deal because how can you trust him after what they've already done so I refuse the deal and go back to the barricade. Now back playing as Connor fighting against another Connor, we do choose to save Hank's life. However, this causes a scuffle where we fight the other Connor until eventually we get mixed up and then we both see Hank has the gun and he doesn't know who is who, so we have to convince him on who to kill and which is the real Connor. And do you know how at the start of the video I mentioned how picking up a photo from a table can literally change the ending? Well that photo that I picked up before in Hank's house was in fact his son, which lets us know that his name is Cole, and everything that happened with Hank's backstory, which is what we tell Hank, and this is how we convince him that we are the real Connor and that he has to shoot the other one. So literally, if I didn't pick up that photograph off the table, he literally could have killed the wrong Connor and the story would have ended terribly. So luckily with Hank shooting the correct Connor, or the incorrect Connor, um, we are best friends with him now and he allows us to convert all of the androids in order to join Marcus's cause. Now we are back as Kara where we've made it to the river as we're going to cross across the border via boats instead. And so we say goodbye to Rose and Adam and thank them for everything that they've done and then get into the boat to get going. Everything starts off going well as we are making our way across the river until eventually a border patrol boat shows up. I try to accelerate away from them uh, but they shoot our engine and then they also end up shooting Luther, which kills him, and Alice also got hit in the crossfire. She's still alive, but she doesn't have long left to live. And so Kara gets into the freezing water, which could potentially shut her down, and starts pushing the boat. We then cut back to Marcus, where the military have finally attacked us, like they said they would. Uh, we get a few quick time events, trying to save as many people as we can until eventually we are cornered right in front of a bus with nowhere left to go so you know what we do we end up kissing north as we were romancing her throughout the game so we have we she became a lover to marcus so that gave us the option to kiss her which then sways the public opinion to convince them that we are in fact more than just androids with human emotions for example love and this uh, convinces the president to give up on the attack. And so with the androids free and Connor returning with all the other new androids added to the cause, they are finally free to live in Detroit. However, as Marcus is giving his final speech to all the androids, something happens to Connor. So I haven't really mentioned this, but throughout the whole game, Connor has been going to this place uh, with this lady called Amanda. So it actually is inside of Connor's head, and Amanda is just the program or 
the leader of Cyberlife. Well, she's not actually real, but they control. They, she's like the avatar inside his head. And it's really just Cyberlife trying to control him. And so now that they know that he's on Marcus's side, they try to finally take over his body and end up killing or assassinating Marcus. However, like Elijah Kamsky told us earlier before, he always leaves an emergency exit in his programs. So we head over to this stone here with this handprint thing on it. And we do that and this allows Connor to purge all of Cyberlife's control and he now has his own free will. So we do not assassinate Marcus. And so that ends Marcus's and Connor's story on a high note with the androids taking over Detroit and gaining their own free will. However, unfortunately, Kara's ending is not quite as good as Alice does end up dying in her hands. Very, very sad as we've been with her throughout the whole game. Kind of disappointed I got this ending for Kara, but we'll definitely fix it in the pacifist playthrough. But before we get to that, she does die. We get the choice on whether to continue on without Kara or just kill ourselves. And I decided to keep her alive, but then it kind of just ends um, without you not really, not really sure what's going on as a car rocks up in front of Kara, and that's her ending. And so that leads us into the end of the game. And yeah, that was my playthrough though. That's what I got on my very first try. Anyway, this leads us into the trophies. Also, just quickly before that, there's like an end credit scene here where uh, Hank meets back up with Connor and they embrace each other. And it's a bit pretty wholesome. Good to see Hank and Connor are probably my two favorite characters in the whole game. <laughs> an army of me. Connor converted the androids. Yes, so we got, managed to do that. Oh, that's... okay. Is that the only trophy? I thought that would have been the end of the game, but maybe there's still a bit more? Alright, well there still must be some more, so... Turns out there was not more to the game, it's just because I got six trophies all at the same time, only one of them popped. I know that is a thing with PlayStation, uh, that not every trophy pops, sometimes it glitches out, but yeah, because there was six all at once, it didn't pop all of them, so here I was going through my trophy list to find the ones that I should have gotten. Damn, okay, I just... I'm looking at this now, and some of these trophies didn't even pop, so I actually got... So what? I don't think moral victory, so that one didn't pop, but we succeeded in making the soldiers stand back. Yeah, 1501. Connor converted the android, so we got that one. So we also got that one as well, moral victory. We got my turn to decide, which is Connor resisting the hacking attempt from Cyberlife. We got one of us, Connor became a deviant. We got undefeated, don't lose any fight before reaching the end. Okay, so that was obviously decent at the <laughs> quick time events. Partners, Hank and Connor were friends until the end. Yes, good old Hanky boy. And this is my story, finish the game once. So obviously, yeah, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, Oh, okay, so this this one popped earlier, but we got six six trophies must have popped at the same time So that's why we didn't see them all but which kind of sucks, but um, Here they are anyway. We did get them So with my first playthrough Officially done it was now time to move on to the pacifist playthrough So for this one I was using a guide on the PSN profiles website and it pretty much guided me exactly what to do um, for each decision kind of thing and it also told me where the magazines were yes I didn't mention it before but there is collectibles in this game and I would say if you're not going to do your own playthrough and you're just going to go straight to the pacifist playthrough and follow a guide make sure you're looking out for the magazines so for example in this chapter here where we were looking for shelter with Car and Alice this time I stayed in an abandoned car instead of in the house as this makes sure that Connor doesn't figure out where we are and we can sneak by without ever alerting the police which unlocks a different magazine later on in the game. So that is the other annoying thing about magazines is you can't get all of them in one playthrough as some of them only appear based on different decisions. 
Alright, so with that out of the way, let's actually get to the first major difference in the pacifist playthrough. So this one isn't really a decision, it's just more my first playthrough, I stuffed it up. This time I actually do catch up to the guy that we're chasing af after in this um, Connor chapter. And once you catch up to him, you get the option to either save Hank as he's about to fall off the side of a building or chase after the Deviant instead. So for this trophy, what you want to do is save Hank. Trophy. Yeah, save Hank. Connor saved Hank. Let's go. The next trophy up is for when we're in this Marcus chapter here, going to the Stratford Tower. What you want to do is you want to actually shoot the guy that's trying to run away so he doesn't set off the alarm as this allows us to get the trophy for completing this heist without the police being alerted or anyone being killed. Let's go when a plan comes together. So Marcus broadcasted his message without raising an alarm or having a team casualty. So you have to shoot that guy so he doesn't raise the alarm. Also, while we're here, I'll mention that this pacifist playthrough, another goal of it is to keep everyone alive without them dying. Uh, so this includes obviously the three main characters and then some of the other side characters as well. And just to be safe, even though Connor can come back to life most of the time that he dies, I tried to keep him alive the whole time. So at this Stratford Tower, um, I just shot the uh, Deviant running away so to risk that no one dies. So the next trophy up, this time is for the Marcus when he performs his march. Last time I decided to run away, well this time you have to stand your ground against the police and to not move, and eventually you'll get the choice to sacrifice Marcus. So you want to sacrifice him, but he won't actually die, instead Josh, the robot that you saved from the uh, Cyberlife warehouse where you stole the parts from earlier in the game he will actually sacrifice himself instead and you'll be able to keep Marcus alive whilst getting the trophy 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 stand your ground Marcus do his ground against the police let's go alright so now we're gonna skip all the way to the end because pretty much my first playthrough was really the pacifist playthrough that's just the way I played just there of course there are a few minor differences as I've shown but pretty much the main thing you want to do in this one is when you get these tickets of this family, you actually do have to steal them in order to keep everyone alive. So as bad as you may feel, you're going to have to keep the tickets to get on the bus to cross the border. Also, another quick thing to note is once you get to the border, you will be asked if you want to sacrifice anyone in order for you to get through without being identified as an android to keep everyone alive you want to not sacrifice anyone as the dude will figure out that you're an android but because uh, Marcus has good public opinion with his pacifist uh, march towards the camps the guy will feel bad for you and he'll let you go through without getting you in trouble and that will of course get the trophy so yeah, in order to actually get a good ending for Kara, Alice and Luther, you do have to steal those tickets, which I would never have guessed on my first playthrough, so you have to do something bad in order to get a good ending. So this is definitely the best ending and playthrough of the entire game. And we should get some trophies popping. Safe harbour. Kara and Alice past the border. Happy family. Kara, Alice, Luther are, to Luther are together at the end. And survivors, everyone is alive at the end. Let's go. And so with the pacifist playthrough done, we are now going to move on to step three, the violent playthrough. A thing to note in this playthrough is that we have to get Connor killed at every possible chance. So pretty much every time you play as him, you want to get him killed in order to get a trophy. So for example, here is the first Connor death in the very first chapter. So what you want to do for this one is get as close as possible to Daniel until you get the choice to sacrifice yourself so Connor will go and push him off the edge while saving the little girl. As he's falling he shoots Connor in the back and he dies and that's his first death. So there's going to be quite a few trophies in this playthrough as it is very different to both my first two playthroughs. So for example here instead of enduring Leo's punches we're going to push him back which almost gets him killed. Um, same thing happens, um, Marcus ends up getting shot, but we do get the trophy. Also, Carl doesn't die, which is kind of cool. Uh, 
Carl dying, Leo dies. Interesting. That should be a trophy though. Defend yourself. Marcus pushed Leo. We now move on to Connor death number two, where we probe this android's memory instead, which makes it hate us even more. And then instead of leaving the room, if you act cold towards it and pretty much gloat in its face, then it will get mad at you, end up shooting you, and then killing itself. Now moving on to Connor death number three, you want to make sure that Kara stayed in the abandoned house, so Connor does chase after her, and so when they cross the road, you want to actually chase after them as Connor, and then as soon as you get onto the highway, don't do any of the quick time events, and Connor will get hit by a truck, and that'll be another death. Alright, so for the third Connor death in a row, when you're chasing after this deviant here along the rooftops, you'll get to a roof that you slide down. Once you get here, stuff up the quick time event, and Connor will just fall to his death. Alright, now finally back to a big decision that is different, and this is for a trophy. Here, when you're chasing after the Tracys here, you do want to shoot this one instead of sparing her, as this will get a trophy. Ruthless. The Tracys were killed, yes. Had to do it for a trophy. Moving on once again, this one is actually a Connor death and a trophy combined into one. So for this one, you pretty much, for, for the whole first start of the game before this, you want to make sure that you're annoying Hank as much as possible and definitely don't be his friend, as once you get to this bridge scene here, he'll threaten to kill you once again. This time, act cold towards him, be like a machine, and he will actually shoot you in the head, counting as a Connor death and also a trophy. Let's go, and it's a trophy too, just a machine. Hank killed Connor. Now we move on to Connor death number six, and this is kind of similar to what happened in my first playthrough. When you interrogate these machines, you figure out which one it is, he attacks you, but when he does actually uh, kill you, or take out your heart thing for the first time, stuff up all the quick time events, and eventually Connor will just bleed out and die. Right, now we're going to move on to another trophy. This time in this chapter playing as Marcus, instead of performing a pacifist riot, you want to do a violent riot. And this is pretty much the exact opposite. You want to break and destroy everything as much as possible. And you will get this trophy. Let's go, burn the place. Marcus conducted a violent riot, yeah, so he did a violent riot this time. Now on to another trophy, of course this time it's pretty much going to be the opposite as last time, this time we are going to shoot the Chloe android when Elijah Kansky tells us to do it and this will get another trophy. Priorities, Connor killed the Chloe, yes we had to do it this time. Now moving on again to another trophy, just like the other few times we're going to do the choice that we haven't done yet. And when we're doing the march here as Marcus, what we're going to do is attack the police instead, and this will get another trophy. Confrontation. Marcus attacked the police. Let's go. That's another trophy. Now we're going to move back towards the Connor deaths for number seven. This one, when you're in the evidence room, um, before you go down there, there will be another police officer called Gavin. You want to make him suspicious by being a bit of a, a dick towards him. And then after you've found out where Jericho is, he'll come in, attack Connor, and just stuff up all the quick time events, and he will kill Connor. Once again, back to the trophies, we're going to be doing the opposite thing. So this time, when you confront Marcus as Connor, what you want to do, instead of becoming a deviant, stay a machine, and this will get a trophy. So Marcus will run away, and once you return to playing as Connor, you'll want to uh, just click nothing here, and you will get killed uh, by this police officer, and that will count as Connor death number eight. Also, while you're here, you want to surrender as Kara and be captured by the guards, as then she will be sent to one of the recycling plants where we'll be able to get a trophy later on in the game. Compliant. Connor stayed a machine. Yes, okay, we got that one. 
From there, you cut back to playing as Marcus, where you actually visit Carl's house, and you actually get to see him, and he's still alive, which is probably one of the coolest things about this violent playthrough. Um, so that's pretty cool, but then once you go back to the church, you want to make the opposite decision and choose to perform a violent liberation of the android recycling plants. In this chapter, you'll also play as Connor, where you'll go to Hank's house, and because you've been so mean and cold to him throughout the whole game, he'll be down in the dumps, he lost his job, and no matter how hard you try to console him and apologize, as soon as you walk out those doors, um, you hear the gunshot, and you know that it's too late. So that is a, one of the saddest things about this playthrough, and why I would never do it, because who would not Who would want to get H Hank killed, seriously? Oh, sh No! Sumo, Hank! Oh, oh, I hate this playthrough, man. I'll be back. Oh, there we go. Connor died or returned at every opportunity before reaching the end. Wow, that's weird that it popped there. Okay, well that's good then. Good to know, because I was... I thought I would have got it earlier, but... I guess we had to see what happened... With Hank, unfortunately. So that's right, the Connor trophy did pop there for some reason. So after you've got those eight Connor deaths, you should get the trophy. Uh, you can get him killed from there on. Uh, but I guess it's kind of pointless because you already got the trophy. So yeah, just make sure you do those first eight deaths and you'll get it. So now we're on to the final chapter here. This is going to be very different, so this might take a bit to explain. But pretty much, Kara and Alice end up at the recycling plant here where they go back into their normal android cells, which look really, really weird and uncanny. Then also play as Marcus, who is, of course, attacking the camp. Connor also came back to life once again, and you get the opportunity to snipe at Marcus to get him killed. However, the police officer from the very, very start of the game, in the very first chapter, comes and tries to stop you, and because I wasn't... I was still... I mean, I already got the trophy, but I just felt like getting... Connor killed even more, so I just let the police officer kill him by failing the QTEs. So I didn't want to kill Marcus yet, because I had to keep him alive for a trophy. Playing as Kara, once again, you'll find Jerry and Luther and plenty of other androids stuck in this camp as well. Um, not really much happens. You pretty much just walk around here um, trying to find Alice because you got separated. You just want to keep Kara and Alice both alive for as long as possible until the end. Um, in order to get a trophy. And as Marcus, what you want to do is make sure you complete every single quick time event. Don't stuff up any of them as you got to succeed in liberating the camp in order to get a trophy as well. Eventually, Connor will come back from the dead once again and you have the choice between controlling him or Marcus. I chose to control Marcus as I want to succeed as him. So yeah, make sure you do all the quick time events, get Connor killed, and that should be pretty much it and you will liberate the camp. In doing so, you will keep Kara and Alice alive as just in the nick of time they are saved by Marcus's successful liberation of the camps. Let's go, liberation. Marcus reached the camp and liberated the androids. Yes. And escape death. Kara and Alice escape the recycling center. That's two more trophies there. Second playthrough done. Unfortunately, still got a few more trophies to get, though, in order to get the platinum. So we're going to have to do a bit of clean up now through chapter select. Yes, so as you heard there, we are now going to move on to our fourth and final step, which is the cleanup of the rest of the trophies using Chapter Select. Another quick thing to note when you're using Chapter Select is when you choose where you want to start off from, make sure you click Do Not Save Progress, because if you do save your progress, it may stop you from gaining access to later chapters on in the game, as you'll have to beat the game all over again to unlock those chapters. Right, anyway, moving on from that, I'm going to get my first cleanup trophy here, which again, we are chasing after this deviant one more time. This time, when you get to the part uh, to either save Hank or keep chasing after the deviant, instead of saving Hank, you want to chase after the deviant, which will get a trophy. There we go, catch it. Connor caught up with Rupert. Next cleanup trophy, this time 
what you want to do in the Marcus chapter at the Stratford Tower, you want to get Simon injured once again, and you don't want to kill him, you want to leave him behind, so then when you get to this chapter as Connor, you can track him down and find out where Simon is. You'll find him on the rooftop, and when you got the opportunity to charge him, make sure you do so he doesn't escape from the scene. And once you've charged him, you'll be able to connect with him, uh, find out where Jericho is before he dies. Now after that, this was probably the most annoying part of the cleanup, is because in order to get the final magazine, I had to get Kara and Alice back to the bus terminal, but also have Marcus do his violent liberation of the camp. And because my latest playthrough, um, he did do the violent one, but we ended up at the recycling center as Kara. I had to go all the way back to the crossroads chapter and then make her play dead once again instead of surrendering in order to get her to the bus terminal. So I had to play through all that once again where I got to this spot here and I accidentally stuffed up one QTE and it stuffed up the whole thing because I would have been sent to the recycling center again. So all that time and progress and I didn't save it because I have you have to do the do not save thing with chapter select so I had to go back and do that all over again. This was so annoying. Anyway, after that, I did eventually make my way all the way back to here at the bus terminal where I was able to pick up the final magazine of the game. Then also chose to play as Connor this time instead of Marcus, made sure I got all the QTEs correct and I managed to kill Marcus this time for another trophy. So after you've killed Marcus, you see North over here as well, you find her hiding out and I killed her off just in case for the trophy as well. So for this one you get an end credit scene as well and this one's probably the worst ending because they make this new Connor version and you literally get replaced. So you did all the hard work, stayed a machine, killed pretty much everyone and then you still get replaced anyway. How ironic. <laughs> And so with that, those trophies were done for killing the leader of the Deviants and also finding all the magazines. Also, another thing to note, in the main menu, you can see all the magazines that you've collected. So if you are missing one, you can see which number you are missing. Right, now we are well and truly onto the final trophy of the game and to get the Platinum as well. So for this final trophy, pretty simple. You go into the Extras menu from the uh, main menu. And what you want to do is you want to purchase pretty much everything in here. You have to spend 20,000 bonus points in total to get the trophy. As you can see, I had 30,000. So you should definitely have enough points by the time you've finished uh, your two or three playthroughs. And yeah, you just got to spend 20,000 of those. It does take quite a while because you're just constantly purchasing things. But once you've purchased everything, you will get the trophy. I have no idea why, but for some reason, my live reaction did not record. But as you can see, I got the trophy for These Are Our Stories, 20,000 points, and then the Platinum Detroit Master collected all trophies. And I also hit a new milestone, level 230. Would you look at that? That is my 18th Platinum done and dusted. Alright, so final thoughts for Detroit Become Human. In terms of just playing it, I'd probably give it an 8 out of 10. Um, I know some people probably wouldn't really be interested in games like this. Um, I know lots of people love Telltale games, um, but at the same time, people prefer more interactive games rather than just quick time events galore and dialogue options. Um, but if you're into story-driven games, the story in this game is very compelling, very good. All the different endings make you want to play the game for even longer and discover them all. In terms of getting the Platinum, I'd probably give it a solid 7 out of 10. It was a good experience. Uh, the thing is though, if you want to get the Platinum as quick as possible, you're better off just doing the pacifist playthrough, the violent playthrough, and then the cleanup, as it will be done a lot quicker. But I feel like this takes out all the fun of the game, as you aren't 
getting your own choice, you're pretty much just following a guide on how to do things. If you do do it my way, it's good because you get to experience the game doing what you want to do, however it does make the Platinum last quite a bit longer. So doing a game on three different playthroughs is annoying enough as it is. To be fair, in this game you do get different endings, but majority of the game I do feel like I was just doing the same thing over and over again, and especially in the earlier stages where you haven't really made too many drastic different choices. So cutscenes are not skippable, so you can't really speed run through the game either. Overall though, I would say this is a very solid, good game, and yeah, I had a fun time with it. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Um, I think I know what I'm going to do for my 19th and 20th Platinum. I'm going to do another PlayStation exclusive, uh, two games in a series that are on PS4 and PS5. Comment down below if you think you might know what they're going to be. Um, but if not, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.